How to create a system for your Amazon FBA business. This is the topic of today. And today I'm joined by Balak Almog, who is an e-commerce systems and outsourcing expert. And our goal with today's video, Barak, can you tell us a little bit what's the goal of today's video? And also tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Welcome as well. Wow, yeah, that, that was quite an intro. Uh, so first, <laughs> I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, Boba. I'm going to talk about a topic that I personally am extremely passionate about, and it's systemizing online businesses and specifically systemizing an Amazon FBA business. And well, this is this is quite a big topic, and I've been, uh, you know, I've been doing it for a long time, and there's many aspects to it. Obviously, we'll not be able to touch all of them, but what I would want to demonstrate to our viewers is the core principle of systemizing an Amazon account. And this is through uh, how to delegate properly a restocking process, you know, restock your inventory to a VA and uh, not compromise the quality and to know that it will execute exactly as if you would do it. So this is what we're going to see today. And I, it's going to be very, very interesting, I'm sure. So, that, so as, thank you, man, for coming. First of all, I appreciate that you're sharing your time with us. I know it's evening time in Thailand right now. You're, you're located in Chiang Mai, man, which is uh, yeah, <laughs> in Northern Thailand for those who have been and seen. That's one of the, I mean, I spent a lot of time in actually in Phuket in Thailand. That's the Southern part, but Chiang Mai is really beautiful and there's nice weather there. I really enjoyed this area as well. For those again, who've been and seen, it's pretty awesome. And as you mentioned, we're going to be speaking about systemizing your Amazon FBA business. And you're also going to give us a pretty cool example, which is going to be easier for us to understand. You're going to show us some stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. But before that, just to clarify a little bit, can you give a bit more light on what exactly is a business system? Can you kind of give more light on this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I think, I think that I spent probably the first two years of dealing with this subject, just learning how to answer this question. Yeah, and it's the, not an easy one, but no business system. I mean, I mean, there are some few formal definitions to it, and yeah. some people say it's how to do your, how you do business, how you operate your business, and a bunch of stuff. I like to look at a business like a machine. Okay, it's a machine. It's a separate entity from myself. It's a proper uh, business, and that machine has three purposes. The first purpose is to move product from you, from the seller downstream to the, uh, to the customers. The second objective is to move money, of course, upstream from the clients, from the customers to you, to your supply chain, to your suppliers. Okay. And there's information that's passing between the sides. And this machine is not constructed randomly. It's to support, you know, th those objectives. And, and I'm going to talk specifically about an Amazon business, but this is like, yes. um, yeah, this, this is obviously universal. I, I did not invent anything, at least not in the big picture. I'm, huh. you know, using very, very universal method, I guess. And, uh, this machine is comprised of several core mechanisms, like, you know, inventory management and PPC and uh, listing optimizations and a bunch like this. So I would say that at least in our context, system is the collection of all the processes and all the all the principles and all the dynamics of how this business moves. Okay, and if you choose to look at it like that, then you are able to separate yourself from the business and optimize everything that's happening and place employees in the meaningful, in the right, and important nodes and eventually uh, even sell the business if you want. So to systemize your business is, I think in the context, the easiest context to understand is like building a machine that generates the money for you, generates and brings the product to the customers, which can function without you as part of the operation. I hope it's clear enough. And if someone is still like struggling to understand, you're gonna see a really cool example soon and it will become more you know, clearer. Yeah, man, uh, thank you for sharing. First, if anyone have any questions, we have them answered in the comments. So either me or Barak will 
personally answer your questions about well all the systemizing process but from what from what i understood essentially business is an entity an entity that's not connected to you as an individual obviously it generates you money it has different parts to it so in amazon business is for example listing optimization is one core part that we can take kind of aside and improve it to make it this part of the business system kind of connected to other parts yes of course we're going to see a cool it's example yes exactly and we can improve it specifically we can improve the listing optimization we can improve the ppc connect them well i guess barak is going to give us some examples so it's going to be much easier because he's the expert i'm not that good in that <laughs> but uh, yes <laughs> cool man so yeah, exactly. if you if you can uh, share it with us show it to us yeah you're welcome man yeah it's going to be cool i think you touched actually you touched the the main point of and and there are many many reasons why you want to systemize your business right i'm sure that anyone that yeah why would you want to systemize your business good good question right okay. exactly so anyone that's watching this video is like i mean if they didn't come here by mistake they're likely already kind of aware that the way that their business operates now probably needs like uh like refurbishing like you know upgrading yeah, yeah. a system before anything else is our way to generate consistency mm. or to create consistency so you you mentioned organic optimization so i'm i'm going to uh, take that as an example and this is something that maybe i'll say a few more words about uh, later on but mm -hmm. let's refer back to 2015 16 is when i started selling on amazon and back that at that time if we launch a new product and we had to create a listing for it we just find freelancer in in fiverr and upwork and we just give him you know a set of instructions maybe a few photos from our supplier and that's it after several days we get the list back and the same we do we do with the photos we we, we just we give the again the supplier photos and maybe some instructions to the photographer and many times it did, that was also our graphic designer and every time we get a bit of a different result especially if you use different freelancers so we did not have consistency and hmm. back at that time Amazon FBA business model was not as competitive, so it wasn't that important to be optimized. But it's not like that today. I'm sure anyone that's watching this on 2020. I can relate, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So we generate, we create, we create, uh, we systemize mechanisms or cores or processes in the business as a way to generate consistency. So we know which steps are being executed and if it's for example for example if it's the listing creation process then i know today that every time i'm going to create a new listing i'm going to do a research and that research will start with finding 10 best ranking competitors for the words that i'm going after for the keywords yeah. that i'm uh, pursuing and after that i'm going to i'm going to research a set of keywords and I get, you know, I, I document my processes precisely, then I'm able to anticipate the result in the end. So I, I know more or less what should be the quality of the keyword results that I, uh, that I generate and what would be the quality of, you know, the locations. And this, this, this process goes, falls, you know, um, all the way to how I communicate with my copywriter, to what benefits I'm going to address or emphasize. Where do I find those benefits? For example, we use, again, Helium, yeah, Helium uh, 10, yeah, Helium 10 X3, for example. Exactly, to analyze the, analyze the reviews, right? The and, review the um, exactly, so we, we follow through with this process. All the way, we get a couple of things. First of all, we get a standardized process that starts with a research that is being executed in the same time and same manner over and over and over again and falls through a, ser a series of like of unit of logical units like title creation and copywriter and photographer each one of those freelancers of those actors they re will receive slideshow or a document formatted exactly the same in the end it's it's 
what, what we did is first we created consistency, then we are able to touch base, you know, each one of those nodes. So we know that if our, if our listing did not deliver what we expected it would be delivered, we can dissect all the parts and see what is the failing component. Maybe the copywriter didn't do mm. a proper job, or maybe uh, we didn't deliver the, the proper inputs, like pains and benefits. So we created consistency. We are able to optimize each one of those components. And, and mo maybe most important of anything else, once these steps are documented properly, we're able to mm. assign a VA that does not need to be an expert to I produce the, the, the heavy lifting steps. You know, the research, they go to Helium 10 and get us the, the keyword list, the keywords. right? So that's what I'm talking about by building a machine. And imagine Voba, that after I, I, I created this whole structure with the processes, with the way to communicate with the freelancers, I take a step back. You know, I got my people, they're trained, so, this whole process produces listings like a factory line, and I don't uh, need to be a part of it. And not only I'm not compromising any quality, if I do my job properly, and then I am able to win and, and you know, beat any other comp competitor that doesn't do the same thing. Now this ex extrapolated to all sections of your business there you go. You got a systemized business. So I understand. So essentially, systemizing a business is going to free your time, I guess. Yes, give you more free time. Oh, oh, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but it's, it's not only going to free your time. It's also going to like ease on it. Yes, free your exactly. It's, yeah, right? that's it. And I got I to gotta tell you, I mean, systemizing your business, again, I, we got the viewers here are likely Amazon sellers, and yes. that's what interests them. But I gotta tell you, this is this approach is addictive. I mean, for me, it started like three and a half years ago, and I I read a book I highly recommend named Work the System. I actually read it and then I listened to it, and it started as a way for me to put my business to order. But then you kind of you see that systemizing produce results so then you start to systemize the way that you eat and your uh, your nutrition you know what uh, sorry your your exercise your activity you start to systemize how you handle issues with friends I mean, everything is systemizable and yes. if it sounds a bit like you know robotic then you should like take a step back and remind yourself that systemizing produce uh, results more efficiently it's basically after what we want and how we get it in the easiest way. I understand. I think systems are everywhere. I mean, for those who are still thinking like it's a bit robotic, then look at the tree. I mean, just think of a tree. Yes. It's getting the light of the sun. Yes. The water. It's a system that makes trees grow all the time throughout the world. It's kind of the same all the time. You know, the sunlight comes, the water, you know, da, 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 da. Well, it's a bit more complicated, da, 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 but essentially that's a system, right? Yeah. If Absolutely. I understand right. And, and yeah. For me, I, I call it to see the metrics. I mean, after a while, I mean, I, I'm going to give you an example, right? I used to draw when I was a kid. I'm, I'm not anymore because it's a, it's a huge time consumer. But I remember at first copying other people and mimicking, you know, some styles. And I got kind of good at it. And after a while, when I uh, observed a new, you know, a new drawing or a new uh, sketch, I was able to distinguish the shading and, you know, the proportions. You kind of start to see the system. And this will happen mm. to you. When you start thinking in systems, it will happen to you in exactly the same way with your Amazon business. So I just described to you how we create a listing, right? Me and, and the sellers that I work with. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, these, some of the viewers, you know, the, the ones that are quick to catch, yes. go ahead and the next time that they create their own list or maybe help a friend, they will start to distinguish these features. Say, hey, wait. This is still the research part. Mm -hmm. I remember that Barack referred to research you know, in a different way. 
they start to distinguish the feature, the, the separate units. So that's what happens to you when you start to think in systems. And this is tremendously helpful, helpful because your brain becomes adapted to taking apart you know, complex activities and tasks and searching the right one to focus. I wouldn't say the faulty one, or it depends on the context. Yeah. But um, you start to see everything in systems. Systems are everywhere. Yeah, man. I understand what you're saying. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, so to say example of an Amazon listing. For example, you're about to create your listing. Yes. Of course, first listing for an Amazon seller, for a newbie Amazon seller is going to be a bit of chaotic. Yes. But with time, if you start thinking in systems, you understand, okay, first I do the keyword research. Then we do this. You know, we take each part, break it into little parts. That's how I do it. At least you break it into little parts, then connect them. And that creates a system that eventually freeze your mind because once you're chaotic, your mind is chaotic, your life is chaotic in a way. And that, that can be cool. Yes. But you know, you kind of want to be more in you know, a peace of mind in a way. And with systems, that's definitely achievable. And man, can you, Barak, kind of give us an example of this? You mentioned that you would give an example, I guess, yeah, of yeah. the, like how the looks or something. Can we do it in zoom here to show the screen uh, kind of thing? Screen yeah, sharing? I actually, yeah, exactly. I actually prepared something. All right, um, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna share my screen with you. All right, yes, yes, we uh, see it here. Uh huh. Perfect, man. Yeah. What What we see here is an element that I strongly recommend any seller out there to use, and this is my company wiki. Uh, this is a company wiki that I use as example in my teachings, but uh, this one emulates an Amazon business proper wiki. Okay, this is just a wiki an example. What is a wiki? A wiki is a website that is only accessible to you or your employees. And it's essentially your information headquarters. Uh -huh. It will contain everything that you and your VAs, your employees need to know to perform your tasks properly. And I'm not mm -hmm. talking only about them. This is not just a management tool. This is a system, business system fundamental. So for example, I can use this to keep my company info, for example, okay? So it's not just for my VA to, to, to search it up and look for it, but maybe, you know, sometimes I would have to uh, maybe sign up for some, I don't know, some tax documents or a new service or anything else. I don't remember my company address. I yeah. just come here and I copy it, okay? Perfect. There are many other things like um, the roadmap, section for example i mission would statement keep, wow um, yeah mission statement it's a good you know every company i used to discount it you know these parts the the company id but i, I think it's extremely it's the core man yes know who you are that you know yes. who you serve and core values for example i gotta say i i adopted this but i'm actually it's, it's gonna be a bit a bit funny but i'm actually using for my own company um amazon uh, amazon core values all right yeah uh, i strongly recommend to every amazon seller to read the everything store it's about how jeff bezos you know grew his company and got to where he is yeah and, i want to read this uh, book man still haven't yeah it's yeah. very inspiring and it's not it's not always an easy read you know uh, but after reading that book i went to check amazon core values and I decided to adapt them because I, I just I simply identify with so many of them the first one is customer obsession and this is me this is absolutely me I, I'm obsessed with my customers and their That's results good, and and there is a bunch of others like constant innovation so anyway I think we digress too much but this is like <laughs> a very good example of uh, things that you can put Company in your wiki uh-huh uh-huh and the next element, what we're going to see here is how to reorder a new stock. I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm not sure we're going to follow through all the way to the end. This is written flow that mm -hmm. helps my or instructs my VA how to create, sorry, how to execute a restocking process. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it will be accompanied by, I'm not sure if anyone that's watching this, you know, are probably some of our viewers are aware of Asana, which is the, the, the project management tool that we use, that I use. I think it's, it's 
it's free and I think it's perfect for managing VAs in an Amazon business. I want to follow through with this, but before that, I want to give like a, a short credit to a friend and an incredible entre entrepreneur that uh, he was one of my first stepping stone in systemizing my own business. It's a guy named Marcin. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how to pronounce his, uh, his family name. He's mm -hmm. Polish, uh, but you can uh, easily look him up. Just search amazing work system. And I took his course in the beginning of the way. Today, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm far, far, far ahead with sellers and the closed groups that I'm working and I developed my own uh, systems. But in the beginning, he was um, very influential, influential. And what you see here is actually a process it was inspired by him. So mm -hmm. I highly recommend that you go and check him. He's a great guy and he's also very knowledgeable about it. Okay, so that's about credits. And I think I want to just go ahead and, and maybe demonstrate how a VA would help me restock my inventory, right? VA is virtual assistance for those who might. VA, um, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, follow virtual yeah. assistants, people who you kind of delegate your work on Amazon or other places to so you can ease your life again. And that's something you, I guess, the process of reordering stock that Barak is going to show us is essentially the process that he created that eases this part for him and specifically the ordering stock because it's a process, like it's a process. You got to, obviously, we're going to see the process now and that's the the workflow of the process i believe right if i understand uh, yeah right. well this is an example process exactly example process i think one thing that you should know that system is a solution to a problem all right each business has to deal with its own unique problem which is the pro even if you and me we both sell the same product exactly in amazon and in the same niche and now even if our product is identical still our situation is not 100% the same. You know, maybe know. you are affiliated with some graphic designer, so you're going to need a comprehensive graphics department in your system, in your, mm. your and sorry, I'm going to need one and you're not going to need one because you got the skill inside your company. So, right, so our two systems will never be the same. Two businesses are obviously never the same, even if everything seems to be like the same situation. And so the processes that you see here, they serve as an example to the principles, but obviously I, I have a cast of sellers, some of them that I work with closely on a weekly basis, and some of them, they just purchased my course. And each one of them takes this process and, and adjusts it to his own business. Some of them make you know, significant adjustments, some of them hardly any, but it's ever the same. So this one will serve only as an example. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I would, you know, you can obviously take it and copy it and use it in your own business, but I would uh, try to see through the actual steps and see the principle. So it, you would yeah, be able exactly. To that's it. that's interesting. Uh huh. Yeah, man. Exactly. exactly. And to adapt it and uh, obviously expand it to other parts of your business or other businesses also. Okay. Pretty so cool. the way that this starts is me and my VAs, we go to, okay, we, we log into Asana every day and that's where we start our, our day. Now, again, this is an example account. So I'm not going to go through all of it because it would just take too long and will take us away from our topic. Uh -huh. And I created an, an, I created like a mock-up project called Inventory Restock. And it's not exactly the structure of our own business, but that's okay for, for the sake of the demonstration. So let's say that I run my business and I check periodically the, the, the triggers to buy new stock. And let's say that today, this morning, I woke up, I checked my inventory levels, and I decided that today is the day that I need to purchase. I need to uh, initiate a new order, mm -hmm. right? So. What I used to do before in 2016 is probably like chat with my supplier and just tell him, hey, dude, John, James, Barbara, you know, all the Chinese English names. Yeah. Uh, we need X units. We need 500 units. But that's not how it happens anymore. We got oh, a yeah. template and that template will 
follow with uh, follow follow through with us through all the process and it's going to be a multiple days process obviously from the initial request for pi until the the product landed at amazon mm -hmm. what we got here is a template so the first thing that i will do i don't want to touch my template and that template is order quantity okay let's say that's 500 units of I'll go for a oil diffuser okay so that's my product first thing uh -huh. i'm going to do is duplicate the task and i'm going to give it a new name order 500 units uh -huh. of we said oil diffuser uh -huh. and that's it and i'm going to go back to asana okay you see it's creating it this software is simply genius i mean it made my life so much easier and i'm, I'm going to demonstrate just a few of the um, you know the, of the strength of it and how it helps simplify it. so you see the template is duplicated and i'm going to move it from templates to sprint and oil diffuser i think we have no it's okay and i go inside and now you should um you should imagine that uh, i just duplicated and i i don't want to do it obviously i want my va to handle it so mm -hmm. i'm going to assign it to elton elton is my va okay yeah uh -huh. he's going to be in charge of it so he wakes up in the morning and he sees barack wants a new order of 500 units of oil diffuser and the first thing that he does goes into this task and he sees in the description that he's got the link ah. the link sends him directly to so you see it's all about efficiency and yes. i'm always going to look for places to make it more and more and more efficient and i gotta stop and say at this at this point that it's a never-ending process you know you can make things efficient to uh, insanity so it's <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> it's absolutely important to know when to stop so you go after the 80 20 rule right mm. when you are 80 percent optimized some people say less then that's a good place to stop and search for opportunities to hmm. improve other systems, right? Interesting, so yes. Our VA, Elton, the faithful uh, Elton, Elton does not work with me anymore, but he is a great VA and very attentive to details. He go inside here and you can see that the, the, the stocking process is divided to two main sections. So general details is just a bunch of stuff that maybe he would want to refresh his memory like stocking process duration periods or maybe he has a few time periods like uh, we want to pi request to project to production starts so this is an interval from pi request until production start i would want it to see it no more than five days i requested a pi and uh, the supplier started the production the max that i'm allowing is seven days PI request to shipment, 35 days, 45 days is the max. Why is this important? We got it in our mind. If there is any you know, delay that deviates, it bridges out those, those numbers, then I need to know about that. Setting up the task is basically how we set up the task, but actually already did that. So we're just gonna go to written flow. And the first step that my VA Elton will do, okay, it's him, it's him from now, it's not me. I'm just like, you know, minding my uh -huh. own business, doing my own thing. He's going to request for order quantity and ask for PI. And he doesn't need to remember anything. Everything is written here. And if he does need to pull something from his memory, then that means that that, that process is not complete. And we're going to have to come here and complete it. So Interesting. Uh, the first step is like log into your email. I'm, I'm instructing, instructing him to the details. Anyone that works with Filipinos know that they're very good with this type of work and they actually want to be instructed and led by the hand. Copy the template below. We got a template to the email window. Change quantity according to the requested number. Why? We got a bunch of red fields here. I hope it's visible. Yes, yes. And, I mean, yes. <laughs> okay. So there is the product name, and we said it's oil diffuser. Maybe we got a bunch of other products. Maybe uh -huh. we even got more than one supplier. Quantity, maybe we want less or more. Let's see what else. Up to jump. Make sure the sender email is purchased. Okay, there are some things that you want to, to just like instruct them to make sure. 
because uh, in here I would want you know to pose a more professional um, business. So I want the, each order to to leave you know to, to to be sent from purchases at my business dot. Yeah, yeah. Make sure contact is our supplier. Obviously, we want you know to not send it to the wrong supplier. Send yeah. It. He's got the template here and he's waiting now. Before mm. he's moving to the next step, I'm gonna come here and just Click. mark this task as complete. And what does that give me? It gives me, as the seller, observability while Elton is not interrupting my day, my day to day Ooh. activity. So I don't need Elton to come and tell me in chat or WhatsApp or Asana. I feel or, sorry. <laughs> or a, yeah, or Slack or anything else that he just requested. Though I, I'm not, you know, I don't Speak. care about that. Yes. I just want to be aware uh, of any emergencies. Mm -hmm. So he marked it as complete. And we're going to see in a bit what happens if there's like unforeseen events or anything yes. that I do uh -huh. need to know. But for now, let's just say that uh, if I want to know what's happening, I just go to Asana. And of course, I'm a follower of this task, you see, uh -huh. and I can uh -huh. see what's going on. And I'm, I can check it from my phone, from my mobile, and like very happy that the process moves on and uh, Elton doesn't bother me. So he moves to the next step and let's say that he received the PI from the supplier. The next thing we wanna do is compare the PI to the previous. I'm not gonna read all, uh, you know, all this text, but if you worked with Chinese people, you know that sometimes they tend to make you know, modifications in oh. the order. And not always those modifications are in your favor, right? Yes. So you are you can find yourself, you know, receiving a PI that's a dollar more expensive for your per unit. So to to tackle that, what we have here is a step, first of all, to compare, to measure the PI to the previous one and alert me, the seller, yeah, mm -hmm. that uh, there is an issue. So if the PI matches, we're just gonna check this task is completed. And if it mm -hmm. does not match, then we got we send an inquiry to the supplier regarding the reason to change. So I wanna I wanna highlight two things here. The first one is that there is okay, this step is here to, to deal with an issue. So many times we're gonna have a, a process and it's not completed. There's an issue, mm -hmm. right? And we can imagine how this step came here after the, this process was not complete and we had you know a surprise from one of the of suppliers and we had to stop execution and elton maybe or someone noticed suddenly that the the pi is is you know, more expensive comparing to the previous one and at this point we stopped ex execution we dealt with that and after after we found after the, the this mini crisis the next stop was to clean to fit, fix this process so you asked what good is a system? A system is a way to uh, also to prevent problems and to fix, to fix past issues. So in this case, there was an issue. We, we solved it, hope, hopefully. Maybe we solved it you know, much more down the road. Maybe we solved it when we already started production. We had to fight yeah. with the supplier. Mm -hmm. okay? And then we mm -hmm. started production, but this is, that's not cool. But we solved it eventually. Yes, yes. And then we instilled that preventive measure to prevent these futures and uh, to this problem to happening again in the future. So this in is problem. Uh, this is principle number one. You get a system, you can prevent, you can fix broken processes, you can prevent mm. prevent future problems. And sometimes you don't have to wait for the crisis. You can already kind of anticipate it, or maybe talk with a friend and hear about something that happened to him. And they say, hey, it, that's not going to happen in my business. I'm going to improve my process beforehand. Mm -hmm. and, and point number two is that you see that, okay, uh, there's an issue. The PI doesn't match. Still, the VA does not run to alert me from my, you know, from my day. There mm -hmm. is a follow-up measure here. And Elton mm -hmm. will send an inquiry to the supplier. Hi, thank you for sending the PI. We have noticed that previously we paid $6.5 and this and that price. 
and shipping of 500 units. Could you please explain the difference or maybe it was a mistake in an error? Wow. So again, this is a way for me to maybe kind of pull myself from this situation yes. or my managers, if I have you know, someone that's in charge of, this, of the logistics. And in the worst, worst case where you know, we could not resolve it, at least the VA will come to me already you know, with information. With something, yes, yes. Uh -huh. So you see Understand. how it already, it, it delivers, it gives back so much power to you. Where, yeah, man. Yeah, you're, you're, you can, you know, lay back and relax until the actual last moment where you, you really have genius. to intervene. That's genius. This is, I just. So let's say is... that everything is okay. All right, let's say that everything is okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to see request. Okay, let's say that everything is okay at this point. And mm -hmm. Elton said, okay, that the VA compared, it's going to compare mm -hmm. PI to the previous. I got a bunch of other really, really cool um, principles to show you. And I think it's going to get more interesting. So I hope you yeah, like it. It's already you... pretty cool, man. Uh, just so you know, yeah. I will stop you for a second. Sorry, man, this is huge information because I guess mm -hmm. if the mindset of people, of people, so people towards systems is going to, how to say, get a kind of get open to this it's a huge th thing that will change your life to the better yes it's gonna free your oh, time yeah, yeah. free your mind mm -hmm. and increase your business to the better yes it's uh i mean just the part that you mentioned with the shipping i just took it to myself man and i saw how many times you know you know when you have to deal with these little things that the little price change and you get the message from the supplier and you're in the middle of something else Oh my God. So yeah, I can see definitely yeah, the power, absolutely. man. And thank you, man. Continue. I think it's, yeah, it's <laughs> okay. powerful. Yes. All right. So compare PI to the previous and let's say that this is, you know, we passed it and Elton, uh, Elton Mark is complete. And the next thing that we do is send the supplier purchase agreement. Okay. Maybe you do use it. Maybe you don't use it. I used to send the purchase agreement every time. So again, we got the sequence of steps it needs to execute exactly, find a purchase agreement, template in the product data page, I think. You can, you can keep it like, you know, in the wiki or you can keep it in your Google Drive or Dropbox or anything else you use. Uh -huh. Copy it to your new, doc, a new document. Of course, we don't use the template and send it over. Change, we show him exactly how to change the title. And there's even the template for the email. And by the way, all of these things can be even more efficient. Like, for example, you can use the um, Google hand responses, right? Or anything else. That, uh, so this is, again, this is just demonstrating the, the principle. Yes. So Elton sends the purchase agreement. And let's say, okay, set up a task for Asana to track supply reply. Okay, let's do it. To track. So assigning is you. I'm actually yes. asking Elton. Uh -huh. to set up another task. Okay, so we send the, the purchase agreement and we set up another task. And the task name will be supplier approved purchase contract. Oh, I got it here. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna demonstrate. You see, never all the, your systems and processes will never be perfect. So there is always a place for common sense, uh -huh. but okay, you can never hone it to the last, last detail. And it's also not very uh, productive. So he, actually here, he's got that Elson, Elton has this supplier approved purchase task. And yeah, he set up for himself. So let's say that now we're waiting. So you're gonna assign it to himself. So that's another nice principle to demonstrate where I don't need to be always the, the one that assigning the task to my VA. I can mm -hmm. tell him, finish this task. You assign yourself the task for next week, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I don't know, next quarter, anything, you know? So he sets it for, let's say, the tomorrow, it's Saturday, but just for the sake of demonstration. And note, if supplier didn't reply within 24 hours, alert your manager. Once you receive the positive reply, move to the next task. So let's say that the supplier didn't reply. Mm -hmm. I can ask my VA, I can still manage my interruptions. So I can ask my VA, to alert me, and it really depends on how tight I want my management to be. I can ask him to, to alert me immediately to my WhatsApp 
on any task that on any delay beyond 24 hours or i can tell him you know what just alert me here in the conversation section in the task so that it does not reach to my whatsapp and it does not interrupt me so here elton imagine that i'm elton i'm saying barack it's been 24 hours and still no contract okay mm -hmm. and he can mm -hmm. say like he can say something like just notifying or he can uh, say or he can ask me a question anything you want me to do now okay mm -hmm. so ask me a question mm -hmm. so this can be like just notifying or asking me for further instructions so i can now imagine that this is me okay and there's mm -hmm. a actual conversation between us I can come, you know, in the morning or maybe I log into a Sunday in the afternoon or something like that. And it doesn't mm -hmm. interrupt me again. And I see that message. It's waiting for me in my inbox. What I'm going to do in my Asana inbox, I'm going to tell him, Elton, sit tight in three days. If no contract, alert my WhatsApp. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. you go. I manage my interruption. This is good for another reason. We got this here, the documentation, you know, and that conversation, by the way, can happen here also directly in the task. So you see this subtask is another task. It's a task on its own. Mm -hmm. I can, I can, I usually just like to keep everything here in one bulk because it's easier. I don't want to go inside each one of those tasks and see what's going on there. But if someone is more comfortable the other way, that's totally okay. So let's say that the supplier approved contract and Elton moved on let's see what the next step all right the next step set up a task to the manager for the payment mm. okay and this is another demonstration of a really interesting principle because i know that some sellers if they come to work with me and they would tell me all right Barack, but this is this is great but i need to pay this the, the i need to pay in the the supplier with my transfer wise or paypal or pioneer and I'm not going to give my VA any access to, to you know, mm -hmm. to those accounts. Mm -hmm. And this is fine. You don't need to be, you know, if, if there is one step that does require your intervention, intervention, that doesn't mean that you, you have to do the entire process. So mm -hmm. in this case, what I'm going to do, okay, it's time to pay the down payment. I'm going to ask my VA set up a task to the manager for the payment. Okay. Once the supplier approved the agreement, go to the sub description and set up a task for your management uh, manager as follow. And this is what he's going to do. It's gonna come, you know, transfer payment. It's gonna to come to mm -hmm. the description, set up a task to the manager, and I'm gonna write here, transfer payment. It's gonna go inside to the subtask. It's gonna write how, you know, what the, uh, hmm. what the amount that I need to pay, right? It's gonna be like, let's say that my down payment is the one is, Fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, mm -hmm, the supplier mm -hmm. pioneer address. So it could be like we said, James before at yeah. <laughs> story dot com or dot ch or I don't know what. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, right. Ed, the principle is understood. Yes. Uh, oh yeah, and I forgot. Of course, it's a task for manager. So what Elton did, mm. he assigned it to me, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he's gonna assign it for let's say today. So this is another nice demonstration showing how Elton stops execution, set up a task. I, I set up the wrong one. This should be it. Yeah, 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 right. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And today, and let's remove this because I just, we don't want to confuse ourselves. Yes, yes. And understand. Elton finished uh -huh. that task and he marked it as complete. He's waiting for me. So he mm -hmm. stopped execution, he's waiting for me. So what I'm gonna do, okay, now it's on me and it's, it's waiting for me in my Asana. I'm going to pay and then I'm going to attach a screenshot of payment confirmation to this task. Okay. So uh, this is something that is actually, if you don't know, Asana is very, very nice. Let's say that I screenshot, I'm just going to screenshot, you know, part of my screen. And this is my payment confirmation. I'm just going to come here and I'm going to click on control V and paste it. So now mm -hmm. we got the screenshot, right? It's going to open up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, documenting the transfer forever if we ever need it we come mm -hmm. back here i mean we can document it anywhere we want but we also got it here all under one roof okay wow nice and man. i paid uh -huh. i paid it okay 
Okay, I created uh, the next step. Yes, yeah, set up a task. That's actually for me, for a manager. Mm -hmm. Attach a screenshot, set up a due date for next subtask to today, and assign it to you. It actually should be to Elton or to the. Yeah, because yeah, I, I understand to, what you mean. Yes, to you like okay, to. Okay, okay. So I'm, so I'm gonna move on. I moved mm -hmm. and then I said I paid. We got the down payment, and I'm gonna ask from Elton to request request a shipping date estimation. And he's, this is exactly the same like the previous task. We got a template and set up a due date for the next subtask as tomorrow. Mark this subtask is complete. Okay, yeah. Once received, once we receive the shipping date, so we got the shipping date estimation. Set up a due date for the next subtask is tomorrow. So let's say that we received it. And the due date for the next subtask is for tomorrow and Elton will set up for himself. Okay, and the supplier obviously started already to, uh, to go with the production. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is something that, this is another uh, nice you know, feature that I wanna show you, recurring tasks. So basically, again, this is something that I noticed when I pro produced, you know, when I uh, manufactured my products back in the days when I just started, I noticed that uh, I'm sure I'm not going to surprise anyone that the due date is not a due date and supplier promises are, you know, yeah. are just good as how harsh as in you, you, you know, you take with that supplier. So yeah, in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need a weekly checkup on production to see, to catch problems early. Mm. And what Elton we do. Interesting. I said here tomorrow, but it actually in the subtask I saw I saw that it's Monday. There are always small errors. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna set up the subtask to Monday to check weekly on production, and I'm gonna ask him to repeat it weekly on Monday. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna ask him to repeat it weekly on Monday, and every time this subtask, every Monday, Elton will use this template to ask the supplier if everything is okay. Hi, name, James. Mm -hmm. I'd like to inquire about the production progress. Can we assist or help in any way? Will the products be ready in the agreed time? Shipping date estimate, we, you know, we wanted to poke his eyes so the mm -hmm. supplier will mm -hmm. only have mm -hmm. it. And let us know if there is any problem and we'll sort it out. Now, this is not a full guarantee, you know, that there would not be any late. Uh, I, I gotta say that I, I have a bullet in my purchase agreement for a 5% um, discount or fine for every week being late. So we implemented a bunch of measures. Nice, man. Uh, it's not a 100% guarantee, but you know, we, we kind of be closing in on that. So what happens on Monday? Let's say that it's Monday and Elton checked on the supplier and the supplier said everything is okay, but there is still three weeks left, left for the production. Elton gonna mark it as complete and see what happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it's a repetitive task, Asana will pop this task again for the next Monday. And Elton will check again and mark it as complete and let's say that everything is okay. And the task will pop again. So this mm -hmm. is a really mm -hmm. nice feature of nice. Asana. Nice. And I like where, you know, it also doesn't break formation. Everything is here, so I can kind of, I can kind of come back later and track it up. Let's say that this the the, the shipment the date has arrived and the manufacturing process ended. Elton can just simply like delete this task. I'm gonna delete it with the keyboard. You can delete it, and the next thing you're gonna do is request for complete shipment details. You know all the stuff that we need for the freight forward like number of cartons, unit per carton, actual carton weight and size. There is also format for this one. We can also instruct our, you know, we can remind our supplier at this point regarding Amazon shipping instructions, you know, to make sure mm -hmm. that they are not forgetting anything. We can't accept more than 150 units per carton. All cartons must contain the same number of units. You can send here anything else if you want to make sure that your cartons your inventory you know your stock is sent properly to amazon the supplier provided the by the way we, we don't have much more of that okay and again i'm hoping that it's very useful to everyone that is watching we don't have 
a lot more to finish with that. Elton received, I say Elton and Elton, right? Elton is the one that's operating this process. And I'm again, I'm in the background. I can just come here and observe and yes. see what's going on, but I don't need to do anything. Elton works with the wiki. So the next thing that we do, we create a shipping plan. And here I want to show you again, mm -hmm. uh, a nice little feature, a link from the wiki to the wiki, how to create a shipping plan. I don't mm. want this process. See, it's a very long process. I don't want it to contaminate my multi-day restocking process. So I just kept it here as a link. And oh, I asked for Elton refer to the following SOP and follow the next step. This process should be, should, this is an SOP that should end in one sitting, creating a shipping plan. Again, Elton does it. If you are not fully trusting your VA to do it, you can still let him do it and just check out after him, right? It's, you know, there's no big deal. We can always create a new one. And this is a huge time saver. And obviously it's a huge mistake evader. You know, everything is written here. You just need to copy paste. Let's see what's next. Create a shipping plan. Once created, update the shipping ID in the task. I want to move on to, you know, to the important stuff. Email destination addresses to the shipping agent. Okay, so there is a new, there is a new actor here, and we does. I'm gonna move faster now because I think most of the principles are kind of understood. And we email the shipping destination address to the shipping agent. Agent, and here I think we got. Please confirm date. We wait for the confirmation. We ask Elton to set a due date to the next sub task for tomorrow. Okay, Elton kind of managing himself. He keeps sending, you know, uh, marking task as complete and assigning the next task to his, himself. This is really nice. Mm -hmm. It's like a, a bit like a robotic action, right? In spite yes. of it being an actual human being. Send carton labels to suppliers. So we send them the labels and every one of us knows exactly what, you know, what this is about. Again, mm -hmm. mark this task as complete. Uh, set a due date to the next sub task to tomorrow inform shipping agent for for the final delivery date there's again i'm gonna run because i want to get to the maybe final just like the most important set this thing is a very very similar to what we already saw and ask shipping date for tracking number we do that add tracking number to shipping plan i know that many sellers are being lazy and not doing that i was lazy i didn't do that but when we have a va a filipino this is his sole purpose in the world Okay, his, all, his sole purpose is to add the tracking number to the shipping plan. Mm -hmm. We pay him for that. It's his job to do this annoying task. So you can definitely feel very yeah. good about adding annoying tasks. And this is important. Okay. Yes, people are getting now, paid. That's fair enough. Yes. And we want it to be complete. Later, it's going to have you know, more information in Amazon. So whether you do it or don't do it, your VA mm -hmm. should do it. Track shipment every day. Okay, and this is again a tracking process. You can decide that you're, you don't want your VA to invest time in it every day, but let's say that we do want to see that every day everything is, you know, is proper. So he's going to assign to himself this task. Of course, he's going to repeat, set it to repeat. Let's say that we're going to repeat daily, but all right, no, weekly, but uh, obviously not, not weekend. It's going to be mm -hmm. Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, wow, so he's actually going to track the shipment each day just to see how it's going. Wow. Again, and yeah, this thing going to pop as much as you want. It could go, That's... it could be really long. So maybe you want to yeah, do understand. it like this. But it, this, let's say that your shipment is, you know, you're sending it, uh, you're shipping it in, in overseas. And it's going to be very long. <laughs> It's really up to you and you can do whatever you want with it. It's uh, like I said, a system is like a fingerprint. It's your personal solution to your problem. And if this thing bothers you, then don't do it. And finally, you know, there are the final steps where Amazon inbound mm -hmm. shipment arrived. So at this point, Elton will erase this last task and will mark it as complete. Maybe he will also want to like inform me if I want to know that my, my stock is arrived to Amazon, I'm going to be happy. And after he's going to follow it up. And after it's fully received, 
is going to mark it also as complete. And this last step is for me. He's going to assign the last step for me. What is that? This last step is basically kind of my own personal post-mortem on this whole process. So before we mark it as complete, I want to kind of come down here, you know, because this is a, a long process, potentially like yeah, four, six weeks, mm -hmm. even more, depending on the product and uh, how long it's going to take to manufacture and sell it. Could take like three months even. And I want to see what happened here. I want to go back and maybe extract my own personal insights. Let's say that we had like an issue here and I did not have to, I don't know, check weekly on production. We had some quality issue maybe. By the mm -hmm. way, I did not mention inspection. So it's very, very modular and you could definitely add here inspection and anything that you need or want your business in there. Yes. So what I do, I check, I take, I look back at everything that happened and I decide if there is something you need to change and then I can embed it in my own improvement processes and I can instruct my, my, my employees differently next time or emphasize aspects that uh, maybe were weak last, last time. When I feel that I'm happy and I got everything that needs to happen to, to get from the achievement, then I'm gonna mark it as complete. I can let, you know, I can tell Elton, you know, maybe he's going to want to be happy to just mark because he really operated the entire thing. I can tell him, yeah. Elton, Elton, good job. Please mark it complete. Okay. So he's going to know that I am satisfied. And the next thing that Elton does is marking it as complete. The last thing, the really last thing that, okay, let's wait, let Asana do it. Mm -hmm. Really, the last thing that I want to show is that when we marked it as complete, it, it, well, we didn't lose it, okay? Let's say that I want to go back and refer to this process. So I can, uh, I can search it in very way. This is not uh, live about Asana, and I strongly encourage you to learn about this, you know, in the free resources about this, this software. But what I'm going to do is just search in the search bar and I'm gonna search like, you know, oil diffuser, or maybe I can search order 500 units. Anyway, it shows me the complete task. So I can come back here and I can investigate anything that I want and I can retrieve any piece of information that I want, okay? So that was a kind of a long one. I'm gonna maybe... <laughs> no, man, and... I, I was following uh, each step and I gotta tell you first, thank you for walking us through all the process because maybe for those who are not familiar with shipping process mm -hmm. on Amazon is gonna give them some insights, but for those who are already shipping for a while, we can understand how it all can be obviously outsourced. I know how all the parts and each part of this process is strictly uh, explained to the VA here as I understand each part that might have a problem has a solution for this problem. So you, yeah, or exactly. yeah, you Barak or the viewer who's watching is going to be, uh, how to say, doing his everyday things, maybe with being with the kids or maybe playing video games. Yes, whatever. And only in the, you know, in the crucial part, if you really need to be involved, the VA will involve you, but usually it's just out of your, you don't do that. Like it's, you know, you run out of things that are more important because in order to improve our businesses, we need to sort of say, get out these little things like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like sending these emails where we can give it to someone else to do this for us in order to improve our lives. And thank you for walking us through all the process, man. That's really interesting. Also showing how the Asana yeah. works. I'm not that familiar with this and uh, I can now understand the logics and the principles that you mentioned, some of the parts. And that's pretty fascinating to me, man. Like, thank you a lot for this one. And it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. To the high level again, you know, we started off with the saying, this is the systems, our way of creating consistency in our businesses. This is probably a top demonstration for that because Throughout this process, I think you would agree. I know he had a talk with Amit Rosenthal last week, yeah. which is a good yeah. friend of mine as well. And mm -hmm. he is doing shipments. Previous conversation with him it was actually it came from him. He said that uh, there is uh, probably nothing less consistent than a process of shipping things across the planet. There are so many things that can happen and so uh. many you know issues that can arise 
and yet this is the way that I demonstrated that this process is our effort, successful effort, I gotta say, to impose consistency on a process that usually can be very chaotic. You know, many actors, yeah. many moving parts, many things that needs to synchronize. And we achieved that with a VA that earns, you know, as low as three dollars an hour. So yeah. this takes us back to the, you know, to the to the to the point that the, we started our talk from how with proper systemization we, we create consistent results and then later we can optimize them bit by bit. The way that I, I show this execute this business or this process executes is the same way essentially or conceptually that I apply to any other process in my business and I, I'm, I'm going to actually show you know maybe a taste for uh, what we started our talk with how we create a, a, an Amazon listing and um, it, it actually we use the same the exact same process for that as well unless you got like any more questions or comments so first, yeah, you're welcome to show it, man. That's pretty cool. And my question, so you actually, with your companies, how to say, you train VAs to understand this? Can you train a VA to and do this? And also with your other company, I guess, or maybe that's a mix. You have like, uh, you know, a, Absolutely. you know what I mean? Yes, you oh, can yeah. create these for others. You can create, so to say, business systems for other people to ease their businesses, to ease their lives. That's what I understand, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually yes. want to share with you two cool, cool points. The first yeah. one is fairly obvious. I'm sure you know. I, I talk with a lot of sellers. For me, I've been doing I've been doing these things for three years, and yeah. for me, and for my for my courses, and for the services that I give, and for my Amazon business and my clients, I tend to forget that sellers see these things and then they say, "Oh my, there's I mean, this is cool, but there is no way I'm writing this thing." And I agree, <laughs> there's no way you should write this thing. What you actually should do, there is a, an organized process of creating this thing. It's like a meta system, system mm -hmm. to create systems. And we don't do these things, you know, it's not writing these processes or transcribing it to text is not a job for a business owner or even a manager. What I do usually is I, I, I create a video with a Loom or any other video software and I send it to my VA. And mm -hmm. then the next thing that the VA does, okay, and, and I will, and I don't, I don't have the process written. Let's say that I want my VA to help me uh, file invoices in my software, invoices software. I use zero. So I'm just going to do it, you know, just do it with a real invoice and I'm going to explain my VA live with a recording what I'm doing. I'm gonna send the video to him and I'm gonna tell him Elton. Right now it's not Elton, it's Abby. Hey mm -hmm. Abby, can you transcribe that and create an SOP? And she does. And yeah, it, it will not be perfect. You're gonna to have to probably either tell them, no, redo it, this is not good, or you're gonna tell them, okay, fix this or add this. But they are the one that should be in charge of it. Yeah. And I'm gonna actually want to give you another really cool anecdote. And this is yeah, something yeah. that uh, will happen to you, any one of you, that will get used to creating processes in the same way, okay? And especially if he's doing it with a VA. I'm gonna take the, the invoicing example again. A while ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, one of my VA, one of my sellers, my my clients, he I I'm keep very close touch with my clients. They, they have access to my WhatsApp account and they, you know, yeah. they feel very open with me. And he, he asked me for this exact same process, invoicing. And I told him, right, it's very, very easy. Just, I explained to him, do exactly what I did, you know, so record your VA and tell her to do, you know, transcribe it. And you know this thing, you don't need me. And he said, right, but can you please can, can you please send me see, oh, your screenshot, your example? And for me, it was a bit, you know, he wanted the process. And for mm. me, it was a bit use, useless because he's probably got another software and another mm. SOP mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I send it to him anyway. Yes. Only when I send him the screenshot, I realized that it's the first time that I'm actually seeing the process. 
we have been filing invoices for a couple of weeks and we had several iterations of, of the process because it was not perfect right from the get-go. I had to tell her to fix that. But I never, I never saw the process. I just told her what to do. And I asked okay. her to write it in the wiki. And then yeah. when I had, yeah, when I had the few uh, issues I and I told her, no, this is not right. You, you mix the line and you did this and this format is not good, you know, in the Excel and they, where we actually invoice them. So uh -huh. fix this and fix the SOP. And she went to the SOP and she fixed everything. I never saw the process. So what I'm saying is that after you get used to this method and you work with a VA, you get the ability to create black boxes of SOP in your business. You just tell the VA what is the desired results. You don't care about the process anymore. I so understand, this is really man. Cool. This uh -huh. A huge time saver. Yes, um, that's the one of the bottom lines. Yeah. It saves a lot of time because we, I guess, yeah. you know, yeah, man. <laughs> um, I can give more examples of really, really relevant ones. I mean, uh, I, I can talk about these things forever. So anyone that's watching, I hope that it's, um, uh, it's, it's interesting and useful for them. So one of the things that I'm doing, first of all, I don't always record the, the SOPs myself. So one of the practices uh -huh. that I like, let's say that you want to train, you know, you want to um, set up a ManyChat account and start creating flows. One of the things that you can do, you can send your VAs and he needs to be someone that kind of understand things and understands you, but he doesn't need to be a genius. You can send uh -huh. him to take a course in All Udemy. Right. Uh -huh. And what I tell them usually, you know, there's a really nice courses in Udemy. And another resource that I found is Linda, Linda um, yes. which is now LinkedIn Learning. It's like $30 a month and it's amazing. A really nice business oriented course is there. And I'm gonna send my VA to watch the course and usually I tell them just ignore all the all the BS that the you know that the, the instructor said. S same like me, you know, I talk a lot. It's okay. Man. <laughs> and just just bring the process. Okay. <laughs> so watch yes. the watch the watch the process. Understand what the instructor said. Bring the process inside. We need the manual. So you uh -huh. want like a many chat account. I don't think you can tell a regular VA, hey, build the ManyChat bot for me, but you can break it down to him for like, for example, create a menu, you know, in the messenger menu. He mm -hmm. can watch a video and he can create the SOP and you don't need to be part of it. And for me, I'm actually absorbing full courses to my, to my account, to my wiki, basing on abilities that I actually need and I'm going to use. And now we're actually experimenting with creating systems. And this is quite complicated. You know, I need to like kind of break down the structure for my VA. All right. So let's say, let's, let's say that uh, something that's from your world, YouTube content creation. And it's, it's, it might be useful for sellers as well. So this is broken down to, you know, to pre -pro uh, research, maybe pre-processing, recording, mm -hmm. maybe post-processing, and maybe uploading, distributing. Oh, the process. In each, right, yes. in each one of those things, there are separate processes. Mm -hmm. If I tell my VA, create for me a YouTube content creation, she will not go up, do a good enough job, not because she's not smart, but because it's, you know, it's not in the scope of her job. And yeah. she also doesn't know what I really want and need. But when you break those things to individual units, you can send your VA to absorb knowledge and, and know-how related to that individual unit. But this is kind of advanced material and you, know, you just take the first step and these things will follow through uh, along the way, you know, as you get more experienced. All right, man, I understand. Pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So, Barak, you, um, you wanted to show some... Uh... How you call it the you know the list uh, Amazon yeah, listing? Yeah. Yes, can yeah, you share it with us? Right, Let, let's keep it short because you you probably can't see it, right? I just shared my. Uh, you still see my Chrome screen? I see your how to reorder new stock. I, I'm gonna unshare and let's share the. 
Okay, I'm just I'm gonna be brief here because I think we talked enough and um, I don't want to repeat too much. But this is basically the concept that we're using to create an Amazon listing. I mentioned it before. On the left side, you can see you know the leisure reality of Amazon 2016, and uh -huh. where we just had to pay like thirty dollars. It's probably barely visible, but maybe you can decipher to Fiverr a copywriter and maybe five hundred, seven hundred dollars to a graphic designer, a photographer, which is also yes. a graphic designer. And today we need to be much more precise. So this is basically how we do it. We start by researching 10 best competitors and we want to see the ones that are ranked the highest to emulate what they do, not copy, but to understand the patterns because if they are ranked high, then they do something right. Then they uh, mm -hmm. appeal to the customers. And we wanna, we wanna adopt the same appeal. Same way we do keyword research and customer research to know what to emphasize in our list. Mm -hmm. And this opens up to tasks that don't necessarily need to you know, happen in a sequence. So this is like, you know, we can work on the photos and title at the same time, basically, you know, the, the photo, mm -hmm. the 3D renderer or the photographer will do the photos, you know, work on the photos and we can create the title. Copywriter will work on his own copywriter, sorry, copywriter work. Yeah, this is basically still a research uh, mm -hmm. phase. Mm -hmm. And this is also, this is, sorry, this is a preparation phase. We mm -hmm. prepare the material in a way that will create us the results. Preparation, preparation, preparation. And these are the actual freelancers that mm -hmm. do the work mm -hmm. for us. And one of the things that I wanna maybe kind of contribute, when I worked on this process with my sellers, first of all, no one, we will never reach a full agreement on what needs the process, what this process needs to, uh, or what form this process needs to take in the end. But we can all agree on a starting point, okay? on uh, on a good enough process that will embed all these elements in the right way. And we'll start with possibly a product name and maybe a few uh, seed keywords and we'll end with all the assets that we require for a listing. And each mm -hmm. one of those sellers will be able to take, you know, each one of those things is not just a process. These units can embed multiple processes. So each one of those sellers can take their own processes and replace the one that we agreed on. Okay, this is part of my work with the mastermind groups, so that they mm -hmm. can take the keyword research and they say, "All right, my my research process is better," or maybe I have a different niche and this process is not working for me. I understand. Our, yeah, the the program is called Data Driven Seller, and the reason that I call it mm. That way is because we try to measure everything that we're doing and we try to find indicators, okay, KPIs for each of those systems. And it's not, it's not very hard. <laughs> the, there is like a set of major KPIs to each one of the business mechanisms, but we try to dive deeper and find KPIs to things that sometimes are not the easiest to um, distinguish. For example, you know, in keyword research, there are many ways to, to measure if your list of keywords is the list that will deliver the, the results. The results are high conversion rate, right? High relevancy. So, sales. Yeah, to, and high sales, obviously. But if I'm yeah. looking directly at organic optimization, I think the major, yeah, conversion rate is translated to yes. sales, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. TTR, conversion sales, yes, all this. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I want a high conversion rate. So the, yes. the translating that or, or backtracking that to the keyword research is not always a very, how should I put it, a very obvious task, you know, because we, we, we have also different type of keyword research, maybe, maybe PPC, maybe our ppc will have a, a bit of a different uh, process than the one that we use just primarily for creating the list so backtracking all the way from conversion rates to this specific part of keyword research is not always 
very obvious, but you can usually do a decent job. So this is, again, this is like a demonstration of what we work on with the group. We also work on inventory, forecasting, and management, and PPC, obviously, we, we have, um, we're working on a, on a method for everything. I, I kind of don't want to like maybe just dive too, too deep right now. Probably this is like a good place to stop because I don't want to overwhelm anyone that's watching this. No, man. Uh, first, thank you a lot for sharing all of this. The, right. What really fascinates me is that everything is broken down into small details, all the process, and that's the way, I guess, yes? Because if you break down it into details and then you fix each detail to be, well, kind of you, you are aware of the detail, yes, that, you know, for example, you need, as we have saw before, we need to take 10 competitors, yes, and then we take this, this, then you can create better processes eventually. Better processes will convert to better conversions, convert to better sales, will be connected also to even the part where we need to order stock. So it's all connected. Yes, that's the big business process, right. obviously. Of, but I, I, guess, guess, of, I gotta take you in on that point, mm -hmm. Noah, because again, it was my problem in the beginning and it's, all, it's, it's a problem with the sellers that just first approached me. We always have a tendency to dive as deep as possible or to search right from the start for the most advanced system that there is. So for example, hmm. you, you saw my listing creation system. I would not necessarily dive immediately in all of the systems to the, the deepest dissection of the KPIs and metrics. We usually try to, first of all, identify our or uh, characterize our system with the high level KPI, the one that indicates most clearly, most directly, whether that system is healthy or not. Mm -hmm. So for example, inventory management, we want just a few of them. Like we want no out of stock days. We want as little money as possible invested mm -hmm. in inventory. So yes. these are a bit con contradicting a little bit. So you kind of want to balance them. But if you got do those two KPIs, I mean, essentially you, you got what you need to know if the system is healthy or not. When do we break down? When we want to be better, when there are mm. issues, when we got competitions. So this is kind of like arms race, you know, in Amazon. And that's mm -hmm. why we are in this highly professional oriented market today, because in the beginning, everyone were just looking at the high level KPIs. And then there was uh -huh. like this arm race where each one gets Yes. Uh, a little better than his neighbors and each one dives deeper and dissects deeper and finds more metrics to optimize thinner and finer and smaller screws in the system and that brought us to where we are today so i would say that do not complicate actually unless uh, unless you are in you know you got the system that's working and you're ready to complicate otherwise just do the mvp do the you know tie the ends and go with it Try to be as simple as you can. I see, man. Yeah. I understand, yes. And uh, that's, I guess, a good advice for salesmen. And just, you know, we've been speaking a lot of systems today and there's a bunch of content. By the way, I'm going to also timestamp it in the description of the video so people can kind of move easier through the video. So I also announced about this in the mm -hmm. beginning. I saw that it helps when I point out people straight away to the description. So they, um, yes, I'm going to take care of this. But to wrap it up, man, I have a question. To you, you're an entrepreneur for a few years. You've been an Amazon seller. You build, you, you build systems for people. You know how to handle virtual assistants, how to assign them to other people. So you're doing a lot of stuff, man. And really what fascinates me about people like you is that, I mean, how is it possible? Like what moves you? Like what moves you as an entrepreneur, man? Like how come? How come you're, I don't know, it's a bit complicated. I mean, but... What I essentially I'm trying to ask, man, is, you know, maybe something you would give from you to us as an entrepreneur to help us also, uh, well, you know, improve our lives as entrepreneurs, because you're in this for a few years, man. And I see that you are, I know you for like, what, three years now, since I first saw your, I think it was the video with the emails that you've advised on how to remove negative feedbacks. I think that was somewhere event, initially that I saw you. So I see you hustling, man, like maybe you're not that aware, but I do see like your posts and all the stuff. 
So yeah, man, maybe a little tips for us as entrepreneurs to, yeah, to, to, to be better entrepreneurs. Well, you, you asked me, I think you, like asked me some, you asked me what moves, what like motivates or moves people. Yes, what motivates you, man. I gotta say that I think that this is something that is uh, in a way we all share. All of us, anyone that's watching this video, you, me, and everyone that's an entrepreneur, you, you kind of want to feel that you got your own little, um, you know, you, you got your own little, um, how do you should I put it? You make your own little influence or impact on the world. Mm -hmm. You got your own thing. When I, I have a master degree in computer science mm -hmm. and I worked in the Israeli high tech industry for a couple of years and I hated it. I couldn't find myself, you know, you're, you're a screw in someone else's machine. Yeah. And you kind of, you just keep wake up every day and asking what's the point of that. So I think one of the things that motivates me right now, and I live in Chiang Mai, I'm an Israeli, but I'm not an Israeli resident anymore, is to make my own impact on the world. And I think that the world, that this life is adventure. It's, we are living in like literally the most amazing era of the human race. Yeah. And the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, I think I have a very analytic brain. Yeah. <laughs> or thinking or something like that. Like, and, uh -huh. and this, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's probably something that has to do maybe either it's my childhood or, you know, a lot of my love to computer hold the beginning, but mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that came during my uh, two degrees computer science and electrical engineering. And the other thing is that I really love to, to teach what I'm learning. And here I'm, I'm gonna actually give an advice. And I think a really important actionable for the viewers. One of the things that I did not do properly right for the start, I did it, but it was like, it was not systemized. It was not deliberate. I think that if you're an entrepreneur, you should work on your networking right from the start. You should, what, what do I mean by networking? You just try to collect and assign around you as many mm -hmm. good, strong, you know, uplift, uplifting people as possible. And, mm -hmm. and, and one way, okay, one of you know, my major accomplishments came from sellers I'm working with and my mastermind groups. They pushed me beyond anything I could have done on my own. And one way to create that kind of mastermind is to teach other people. Hmm. Just go ahead, you know, on Zoom, like, you know, like me and Bob are doing with a bunch of sellers and pick mm -hmm. up something that you're good at and teach them. Tell them, I'm going to give 30 minutes teaching you how to search products. They got a killer method. Okay. Hmm. It's going to make you really good. It's going to attract people and resources around you. I did collect very good friends, colleagues, customers through this past four years. I have... If I would go back to that time and begin all, you know, all fresh, I would make it deliberate, and I would I would talk with as much people as many people as possible, and I would teach immediately from the start as many people as possible. Today, in Amazon 2020, I think that this is the death of the solopreneur era. This is a time of masterminds. So find your own mastermind. I guess that's my my biggest tip for now. Come in a month, I'm gonna have another one. Thanks, man. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I understand. And I'm also in a mastermind. Every Tuesday, I meet with three guys from Canada, and we brainstorm. We set up tasks for the week, and definitely, it's an awesome thing, man. And that helps. That helps to uh, me as a seller, and I help them as sellers, and that helps my brain become better more kind of you know and hopefully that's making more impact therefore and i'm making more impact which is pretty cool man thank you for sharing let me know man thank you for first of all also inspiring us and giving us some new things i have a lot of brain food from you man i saw the asana the processes i saw the process and that's kind of cool man and thank you for this and let know our people the viewers how can they best contact you man how can they find you and talk to you maybe yeah uh, yeah glad, glad to first of all you can reach out to me my agency is called sellerframe.com sellerframe mm -hmm. like you know we're like, gonna put it all in the description uh, uh yeah, the yeah links yeah. yes uh-huh uh, 
but I, I think it would be I would be really happy. You know, the easiest way to get to me is just uh, to Facebook. I think Facebook. it's like more, um, yeah, you know, it's more direct, more personal. Yeah. And you can definitely reach out to me. I, I think, um, you know, if you allow me, I will just mention that I love to talk to people and I love to talk to audiences. So if anyone of the viewers would want me to come and talk with his group, small, big, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, networking, meet good people, talk with good people, inspire and be inspired. So just reach out to me and I'm going to come and talk with you, with your audience. It doesn't have to be live. It would be my pleasure. Awesome, man. Thank you. So yeah, we're going to have your Facebook, your website in the description. And man, for you know my people who are watching, for the viewers, maybe for some people who are just watching it that they found the video anyhow, do you think you would like to share some kind of discount or something connected to your services? Maybe in the future, maybe now. What do you think? Is it cool? Uh, yeah, I, I didn't prepare for that, but uh, definitely I'm going to think of something and I'm going to we're gonna put it in the description, okay? Basically, you know, my what I'm cool, doing man. right now is working tightly, like I mentioned, with Amazon sellers in small groups, meeting weekly, and tackling the problems and building the system in their own accounts. I got a course, but right now it's unfortunately in Hebrew, mm -hmm. so probably you're not gonna be relevant for most of the sellers. We're gonna think of something and put it in the description. Yeah. And yeah, for the Israeli watchers that uh, have Barak also speaks Hebrew and he has also a group, Amazon FBA Israel, that you're also welcome to check. It's a big group for mainly people who speak Hebrew. That's But if you don't speak and you just want to hang out with Israelis, get some ideas, I guess you're also welcome to join. And yeah, man, we're going to put everything in the description. Thank you for coming today, man. I really appreciate mm -hmm. that. It's a big thing. Yeah. And I hope to see you again here, man. Yeah, you will see me again. We, we, if we get uh, enough comments, then I'm going to come. If you guys want to know about anything else, you know, more, a more in-depth look, definitely you're going to see me again. We're going to come for another one. Thanks for having me, Vova. It was amazing. Cool, man. Thank you. See you next time. Thank you, man. Perfect. <laughs>